Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. I am back to normality, back from Edinburgh now, after having walked about 50, 55 kilometers, seeing as much of the city as I could, I would definitely recommend a visit. Lovely city, definitely got the weather for it, and plenty of sites to see, both free and paid for. Now we can't rest on our laurels, we didn't get the competitive practice in last weekend, so we're going to Dublin a little bit raw, a little bit unclear as to how things are shaping up, what competitive decks people are breaking out. Obviously bounced some ideas around with the people in Edinburgh, uh, the few of them that were there, but it's hard to get a read on the meta. Now there's a lot talked about recently about sideboarding in Netrunner, uh, mainly brought about because of a podcast from The Winning Agenda. Uh, it's an interesting conversation and it sparked a lot of debate on Reddit as well. Uh, from my point of view, I really like seeing the, the judgment call in Netrunner. I'm not good at it, I will say that much. I'll usually completely miss what people are going for. Uh, I find the Irish meta very difficult to call, even when, let's say, RP was a big thing. There were some players doing really well with Wayland. Um, we've seen NBN, when, when Wizard is doing really well, you'll still see Shapers, things like that. And obviously that makes it difficult to call for this weekend, what decks do I go in with? I can, of course, bring the Blue Sun and Noise deck that I have been A, practicing with, and B, have already, you know, ready to go. Uh, but is it the right call? As I said, the Wayland deck can lose in a lot of ways. I have tweaked it slightly to hopefully counteract some of those ways that it can lose. But, I don't know. Uh, one of our Irish players, Nicole, did really well with Blue Sun for a long, long time. She constantly kept uh, catching people out. And I think it works well against the Anarch matchup. Uh, Shaper could be more problematic. And that's where the judgment call comes. Haley won't be as much of a problem anymore because of Salem's hospitality, I think. But Kate, decks that make a lot of money, that's still going to cause some problems. Uh, noise is noise, noise is good. I'm happy to go with that. I think it can do grand against uh, Industrial Dynamics. I have a couple of bits of tech in there just to counter that. Um, or to make it a little bit easier at the very least. But this weekend is just a spring kit. I already have all my alt arts and things like that. So I can go in a bit more relaxed. Uh, maybe just try out these decks, see how they're working. And if they do well, go, go to regionals with them with the tournament practice in mind, uh, or under the belt at least. Uh, if they don't do so well, well then we're in panic stations once again, where I have to flip the script, try something new. Uh, if you've been watching the channel recently, you've seen a lot of the political dealings near the hub, which I'm enjoying. I don't know if it'll be competitive. I think as well, it has a lot of flaws, but uh, both decks have been fun to play. It's gonna be interesting. A um, couple of days to kind of tweak things, work things out and go in on Sunday then, and we'll see how I get on. It's exciting times ahead. Fantasy Flight just showed off 23 seconds. Some really interesting cards in there, and I love the lore as well that, you know, there's been some sort of cyber attack, cyber event, and that it's thrown the world into turmoil. Variety of weird and wacky cards. I'm really looking forward to seeing what, uh, what they can do. I'll be honest, I wasn't all that bothered that Fantasy Flight wasn't unveiling too much ahead. Um, as it is, I feel that, you know, there's a lot of current cards that people haven't experimented with fully, and. I haven't really even gotten uh, to grips with yet. So I think there's a lot in the current space that we can do before moving on. But I do see the argument for, you know, wanting to hear news about what's to come as well. I mean, A, you want to know that the game that you love and have played for, for years possibly, and have put so much money into, is going to be supported for uh, a while to come yet. But still, a new pack announcement is always something to celebrate. Uh, looking forward to seeing what can come, but I mean, it's going to be ages yet before we actually get to play with them. So, a lot of theory crafting, a lot of speculation, a lot of sky is falling kind of fear, I presume. Uh, we'll see what the coming months bring. But for now, I still have to mess around with a lot of uh, Salsetta Island. As you've seen from the channel, you know, I messed around with a couple of different ideas, but so many cards in the pack that I haven't even looked at, probably couldn't even tell you that they're in the pack. So, you know, that's something I have to address. So hopefully you'll have just seen a clip uh, talking about 23 seconds in the upcoming cycle. And now we've gotten the spoilers for The Liberated Mind. And it's looking really interesting. There's quite a few unusual cards in there. There's a few quirky combinations. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it all shapes up. Uh, one piece of ice that I will, however, highlight right now is Brainstorm, that new HB piece of ice. Uh, it really means that you need to get your Sentry Breaker down ASAP because getting hit with brain damage for every single card in your hand, uh, well, that's the game over, basically. If someone is running that, there's a good chance they're running newer DMP or something to just snipe a little bit of damage. Um, it ruins anything that runs Faust, and yeah, you're just going to be in a 
horrible, horrible position if you get hit by that at all. This turn could be really dangerous from now on. Um, I'm sure you're going to see it splashed in a few decks just to make things unexpected. Um, but considering an opening turn can easily be Ice Ice Hedge Fund, could be scary. So because the spoilers are just out and the pack won't be far behind it, I wanted to just cover a couple of cards. Uh, it's not going to be a full card by card unboxing, anything like that. I don't feel well equipped enough to go through everything and be able to point out, you know, how good or how competitive something is going to be, how fun it'll be, or even, you know, the combinations that are there. There are some very obvious combinations. I mean, if you look at the Emptied Mind, uh, when your turn begins, you gain a click if you have no cards in your grip. Then you go down to the Noble Path, which gets you to trash your grip, prevents all damage during the run. As long as you're not up against someone who's going to kill you uh, on their turn, you can play these two to get a click on your next turn if your hand is trash anyway. So that could be interesting, all right? One of the cards I'm really looking forward to is Information Sifting. If we're going to see a return of CI, this will be a big card. Uh, alternatively, it's just another tool for Ken, for example, or it's a slightly cheaper legwork if you use Fisk Investment Seminar, for example. Uh, you can access more cards than you would have and then it just comes down to the mind games of will they put all the agendas into one pile and kind of go for the 50-50 shot. Um, if you're up against Jinteki PE, which pile do you pick or do you just discard this card immediately? Um, it could be a bit of fun. Out of the Ashes, hey, runs win games. So, I mean, the more runs you can make, the better. Uh, you can use it once to make a run and then you can use it from your heap as well to make another run. So it doesn't have that same stipulation as Jackson Clare, for example, which denies you from using programs. Shaper also runs Notoriety, so you can get your extra point on the board. You can combine it with the likes of Doppelganger, Medium, start making waves like that, security testing. I mean, there's a lot you can do with it, I think. Rebirth is the card that people have been talking about possibly the most since it was spoiled. Very much been talked about in Criminal. We're going to see the return of Andy. In fact, I played against this the other night, Andy and Gabe. That's not your mother, it's a man, baby! Yeah! No! Yeah! Come on! And then the turning wheel is a great one for any runner, basically. It shores up a weakness if you're missing out on multi-axis on one particular server. Uh, it means you can just go for your one axis. If you don't steal an agenda, it's not the worst thing in the world. You still get a counter onto this, which you can use in the future. And there's nothing that the corp can do about it, like purging virus tokens or anything like that. One point to make about it as well is that it is virtual, which means Apex finally gets some tools to play with. It'll work well out of Adam as well, I think, because you're going to be making runs anyway. You're not guaranteed to hit an agenda every time, but you can make sure your late game is still quite strong. And apparently there's a lot of Or of War decks that are putting this in as well. And then when they really want to go for their massive drive, they can just access so many cards. On the Corp side, I mentioned Brainstorm already. It's going to be a powerful one. Yes, incredibly expensive. Yes, it's breakable by Mimic. Uh, Mongoose could do well here, but it is a dangerous one and it really means that we have to leave behind that attitude of I'll run anywhere, I'll do anything that we had for so long. As for a lot of the rest of the Corp cards, I'm not that enthused by them. I mean, you're looking at a 5-3 out of NBN, which you basically have to score it first for it to have any use. We have a piece of Psy Ice that can again be broken fairly easily by any Sentry Breaker in the game. Now, Waver is a piece of Ice that I could see getting played. Uh, it's all the fives, five cost, five strength, and trace five. And the impact can be quite significant as well. And the subroutine is pretty punishing. I mean, you're trashing cards with a play or install cost equal to or less than the amount by which your trace exceeds their link strength. So they're going to have to pay into it at the very least. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the release of this. And then we have Vanilla, a clear demonstration of power creep in Netrunner. The game is over, the dream is ruined. Uh, zero cost, zero strength barrier with end the run. But unlike Paper Wall, it does not trash itself after you break it. So that's a hopefully brief rundown of a few of the interesting cards. Let me know which cards you're looking forward to in the Liberated Mind, what kind of ideas you've got to hand, and maybe we can create something interesting. Alrighty, that is it for me this week. I hope you all enjoyed the vlog, and thank you very much for watching. In Dublin this weekend for the Spring Cut Tournament, looking forward to the dose of competitive action, and we'll see how Blue Sun and Noise fare, assuming those are the ones I bring. And then we're into really serious business with the regionals next weekend. I will of course keep you posted as to how the event went. Uh, tune in on Tuesday for the tournament recap. And then we'll start building for regionals. So thanks guys, I'll catch you again later.